you able to trust yourself? Everything in creation is conspiring to help you succeed. It's helping you. It's supporting you. It's willing to even carry you as you rise. You just have to allow it. <laughs> Which is the hard part. You have to allow for this process to occur. This continuing thought about things that have gone wrong. Things that have really hurt you. And this fixation on all those old things really keep you existing within the void. This is a space of nothingness where you can feel really depleted, very alone, very misunderstood, and very unworthy. And you know, sometimes I have to experience this pushback too to give the opportunity to choose to not stay there. You know, to choose yourself. Sometimes when I get put in the void, I feel a very huge sense of, I don't know who I am anymore. Why am I even doing this? And it's a very dark process, very painful, very viscerally felt dark process, but it's always to initiate rediscovery, to allow our inner child to rise up and begin really being present in our life experiences again. You know, you're stuck in the past, it's depression. You're stuck in the future, that's anxiety. Okay, change of scenery. of being very childlike one for my stature I'm only like 4'10 so yes I am the size of a 10 year old but intellectually very much an old soul has been around for a very long time and yet I still try to keep my childlike innocence, even though I really could never have it. I feel like I find it more in my adulthood. And it's important to me. You have to embrace all of your parts. You have to allow yourself to be fully present and experience life, which I have a hard time doing. And you need to, you know, feel it the way you need to. I mean, really though, you're the one that's going to be harvesting the effects of the choices that are chosen. So if you're letting someone else choose the events of your life, you know, what you decide, yeah, they're not the ones that's going to be affected by that as much. It's all going to be you. It all rests on your shoulders. So, you might as well choose for yourself, because I spent a long, very long portion of my life being held back by others' opinions and choices for me, which is how I got 
down to Florida, too. I'm in my 30s, and people want to treat me like a 12-year-old. It's frustrating. Just because they can't realize you're your own person. You know, granted, you make mistakes, you fail, you make wrong decisions, but that doesn't mean you're stupid or lack common sense. I unfortunately just go too heavily with my emotions, and I usually fuck things up, but I'm really trying to blend my logical side with my emotional side, and that is a very strong task. magic that is inside of you, just let it flow. Be water like Bruce Lee. The magic inside of you primarily is contained within that void. The void within yourself and it's scary. It's a scary fucking place to reach really like a sense of giving up on everything, giving up on life almost, but something keeps you anchored into this life and that's why it's important, really, really important for you to take time to get to know yourself again, because you've been changing, you've been growing and changing for so long and when you allow yourself to just sit stagnant with this assumption that you're the same person you were five years ago, a year ago, hell, a month ago. That doesn't serve you. You've been growing every single day. You become slightly different when you grow just a little bit more. And so the way you see things definitely are going to change too. And all things must come from, you know, come to the soul from its roots, from where it's planted, coming to you from the void. So if it's coming up from the void, it's all your power needing to be rediscovered. I'm a person very much uh, about the moon. It's one of my favorite things in life. Uh, being a Cancer, we're ruled by the moon. That is our ruling planet. And also, I'm mostly Pisces, which is also known for the moon. Both Cancer and Pisces. So, it is our hidden, um, the hidden side of ourselves. Uh, the emotions. The mother. It's intense. Um, I'm also, you know, with the Pisces moon, I'm emotional. But it's all about this mysterious feeling and hidden messages of intuition and self protection that, you know, this represents. What's felt instinctively and what's at the core our emotions the intimate side of who we are and allowing yourself to the fluctuations in your life and the moon is the side we keep concealed it's the sun's reflection it's all our you know dark side of the moon dark night of the soul is all of our secrets, our shadow side. So all these things keep coming up and the void is needing to rise up. It is part of your creation, part of what supports you in your attempt to rise. You know, all is not as it seems because something is being obscured. 
You may feel like you've lost your direction, that you don't have all the information to go forward. And I've really been trying to come to terms with that. And I have to just become okay with not understanding, you know, why I'm being asked to experience whatever this is. But I, I do, I do know a lot of the reasons for that. It's so important, but man, the universe. Ugh. I always have to learn everything the hard way, the most painful way possible. Like, can anything just ever be easy? <laughs> Why? It's like I keep experiencing issues because all these certain energies, these people around me are just like emotionally moon tells us to, you know, to hang on, oftentimes, way after we should have released something from our lives, or just given up, but no moon shines, and it's like, hang in there, you'll win sooner or later, and something is gonna come back to support me in my journey. I don't know if it's a person, or if it's an understanding, or if it's some kind of life circumstance that's needing to repeat, and I'm needing to relearn something. Either way, it's going to be intense, no matter how it comes back, no matter what it is, it's going to be an intense process hold of darkness, like, I'm marking this dark night of the soul, which is basically the void of the soul. It's the conscious experience of entering the void. There's major changes occurring, things happening within myself, my life, and you I'm just needed to embrace these changes. And so signs you're needing to embrace who you are in this moment and who you're going to be if you allow yourself to embrace these changes, to embrace this experience, being immersed in your own voice. sense of realization and the realization will help you understand you are the key you're not looking for a key you are the key you are the law the lock that's kept you out of that aspect of yourself you are all the components you could ever need to fill that void and you're becoming aware of that to balance yourself, balance between softness and vulnerability as well as fortitude, you know, being fortified as you experience these um, natural challenges to remain soft even in war, like I mean, it's in a spiritual warfare these past few years. It's intense. And to be able to, to balance all your aspects, people often think that someone who can balance all their sides, all their fractals, are somehow crazy. And I've heard people say that about me, where because I can be serious, I can be ridiculously obnoxious and goofy and then go from like manic laughter to crying <laughs> in one video, no less. Like, 
and they're just like, you know, people think I've lost my mind. No, I'm just freeing myself to fully experience the moment that I'm in. If something's funny, I'm gonna laugh. If something's painful, whether it's my pain or not, you know, this sensation of emotional pain oftentimes, it'll make me cry. I don't need to put up an act. This, this mask that the people closest to me like think I, I put on, but they're all because they're hiding behind their own masks. They're like, what's wrong with you? Why do you show the, these sides? I'm like, because this is who I am. Like, I don't need to cultivate some public image of what you think I should be or going to be because I resonate with who I am in my authenticity and you're either going to like that or you're not. And both are okay with me. This, you know, I've come to terms with this. You can't control the way someone will feel about you. They will resonate with, you know, either who you are, the way you are as you are, or they don't. And they don't know know why are you wasting time trying to get them to agree with you you know need their approval to be who I am there's so many other people that will be drawn to me that will like me that you don't have to try to talk them into it it's always you always fixate on the one person that, that you want to like you, you know. I feel like I'm about to go through yet another, like, ceremonial death. And I have, I have died and been reborn so many times already in this life. that that piece of me I, I just don't like anymore I kill it off I kill that version of me and this is where the aspect of yourself that you didn't believe you know it's your need your right to freedom of emotional mental energetic freedom That's, that's what I'm trying to get. Where I've been closing my eyes to illusions and leading me to guidance of truth. This huge DNA activation period. compass getting back on my path and whether I understand where I'm going or not you know I'm gonna be guided perfectly guided and I'm gonna get those messages from my higher self and encouraging me to be that peacock that I am and not give a shit if you care if the peacock is pretty because the peacock doesn't have shame for being ridiculously beautiful the beauty within you, no shame, that's the message, to 
accept yourself as you are with no shame, your wisdom will come to you. It's waiting to return. Maybe that's what's trying to come back. choose to shrink yourself. Fuck those people. There's so many of those people. Those are the kind of people that celebrate other people's suffering. Fuck them. You know what I'm saying? Just fuck them. Who gives a shit? You want to celebrate suffering? Celebrate your own suffering. You have to be suffering on such an elevated degree if you want to celebrate other people's suffering. I will never understand those people because my heart will never operate that way. I will never celebrate the suffering of someone, even people who have done me wrong. You want to celebrate other people's suffering. I don't got nothing say to you. Because you gotta have the ability to connect with every single layer and level of creation, every level of dimensional consciousness, every layer of divinity you have to access remotely. Allow yourself to, to tap into that way of, you know, getting reacquainted with all the different parts of you that exist in so many places at once. There's a, it's a beautiful time right now. It's a beautiful time. Even in this, you know, lockdown. Find the goodness in that. Spend time with your family. Get to know them. So we all. Instead of this surface. Everybody wants to show. You're being gifted this this quiet time to really begin exploring who you are if you choose. This is something you have to choose now to choose to use this time wisely or stay fixated on stupid things. Definitely afraid of, you know, that's your choice. Trust that no one else gets to tell you cycles of fear, of being harsh with yourself, being unfair with your expectations of yourself, because we have this beautiful ability to just be like, okay, I'm disappointed, I'm not disappointed, it's okay, maybe next time, and then, like, I can't believe you, you know, or you're just judging yourself, or talking to ourselves. I can't believe you. I can't believe how you fail. I can't believe this. I can't believe where we regularly have this, so much compassion for everyone else but ourselves. And this is really that time to recognize. Stop participating in that. It's time for us to escape this mental and emotional prison we put ourselves in. Being an empath, sometimes I just feel like a human garbage disposal. Like we 
make it a point to consume others' pain and suffering, and for what? What is that rooted in? Is there a way someone else failed you, but, you know, took the responsibility of that sense of disappointment? Where is that rooted? to disengage that need to lie to ourselves. The clarity. To discern what your connections are about. And sometimes This mirror, a divine mirror, to come to this realization. A lot of us are experiencing these survival fears in our attempt to regain a sense of renewal. We're seeking this holographic healing. felt like I've walked through a desert for so many years and been through darkness and, and trials and confusion and uncertainty as I fought to seek my truth, my divine revelation, seeking my purpose to confirm because the greatest darkness is just there to unveil the new dawn. And don't turn away from your progress. Because the next step will be golden rays of the rising sun. I know every time I heal parts of myself, it sends out this ripple effect to those around me. And it's so important for us to choose our self-healing, to choose our self right now, to allow yourself to see the truth arising in some sort of, you know, feared, uncontrolled way. All the things happening behind. Endings are always new beginnings. If you want to see it as an end, then see it as that. If you want to fixate on the end, every ending is a precursor to a new beginning. It's where you take it.